Well, hello everyone. Welcome to the first episode of Curated Careers, a career series focused on interviewing individuals who are professionals in the museum and art world to give insights into the industry. Um, the goal is to create a free resource where you can come um, and learn from people their paths. And I'm so excited to introduce our very first guest, Telly Simpson. Telly is a Morgan State University alumna and founder of A Girl in a Museum World, a museum and history-based blog. Her debut children's book, A Girl in a Museum World, which I own and it's in our museum collection, was written to inspire kids and anyone who picks up the book to get inspired about art and history. She is passionate about inspiring folks to excel inside and outside of their museum career. She currently works at the Smithsonian Asian Art Museum in Rights and Reproduction. And I'm so excited to welcome Telly because she is all about creating resources of reaching out um, to individuals. So welcome Telly, I'm so excited to have you. Thank, Thank you, you for, for having, having me. me. Um, um, as I mentioned sure earlier, there is pressure being the first, first but I'm so, so glad that you invited me on. Oh, well, we're so excited to have you. And I, you, you've just done so much, and not just in your like traditional career path, but also doing being an entrepreneur and an author. So I would just love if you could start to tell us about how you got here, how you became interested in this field and maybe just your education and how you got started. Yeah, yeah sure. Um, I'm, I'm going to try, try to sum this up. up. Um, um, I, I always knew that I wanted to like work, work in history, um, and a museum. Um, I just, I just didn't know like how to get there. Um, I grew, I grew up, up going to museums. museums. I, I was listening to my grandfather's stories. Um, I was, I was that, that nerd who just, just always liked to move about a little bit. I don't know why, why but <laughs> that, that, that was just me. Yeah, yeah, I was like, oh, this is my time. So, um, yeah, so, um, yeah, yeah fast, fast forward uh, years, years later, later um, I, went I went to college, college um, pursued a history, history degree. Um, I thought I wanted to be a history, history teacher. teacher. So, so um, I, I went to my old high school, school and I became a history substitute. And, and I seem quickly realized that that's, that's not, that's not for, for me. Um, I remember sitting, sitting in the break room and asking myself, do you want to get paid to do this for the rest of your life? And the answer was, was no. no. And there, there are multiple reasons I went into that. that. Um, I'm, I'm an introvert, so I that wasn't, wasn't going to work out for me. And, and also the curriculum. I wasn't okay with teaching. The curriculum that was in place then. So fast forward to senior, senior year of college, I went back to my original plan. I worked in the museum, and I started volunteering, and interning, and asking questions, questions that were in the museum. And yeah, yeah. That's, that's a quick, quick summary. <laughs> very, very yeah. So when you say you started interning, what departments were you drawn to? What um, Clearly, I'm assuming more the history side of museums versus maybe art. But what, um, you know, there are obviously so many aspects of museum work. What were you drawn to? Or did that change over time? Can you tell us a bit about that? Yeah. yeah. So when, when I first, I first started, started, I was, I was, I was really, really all over the place. place. I, I interned, interned at archives, archives um, history, history museums, museums, art, art museums. museums. Um, um, I, was I was in... in um, Foundation, foundation collections. collections. I, was I was really, really trying, trying to figure out what, what I wanted, wanted to do in the museum. So, so any opportunity, I, I jumped at it. And just, just getting my foot in the door into different, different departments, I was, I was able to figure out what I love most. most. And, and for me, that was the collections department. So, so um, yeah, yeah, I started, started reaching out to people who were in positions that I saw myself, myself in, in. And, and just asking, asking them, hey, you mind doing lunch, lunch, lunch and asking some questions, questions, you know, things like that. that. And um, I, I seem to realize that there was going to be a lot of hard work. Um, um, simply, simply just graduated, graduated with, with the degree. I got a guaranteed job. job. It, was it was a big reality check, check for me. Yeah. Um, so, so, yeah, yeah from, from there, I really started um, curating a very strict plan on to figure out how to get into the department. 
so I narrowed, narrowed down my interning and volunteering, volunteering teacher's positions and in the collections department, department if that's what I wanted, wanted to do. So it was just going to be very strategic and specific. Um, that, 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 that helped me out a lot. And that, and that being so, so much of all over the place. place. Yeah. <laughs> and what about collections were you gravitated toward? And well, let's start there. And then I'll ask a little bit more what that looked like for you. Yeah, so, um, always gonna like the coins. Um, my, my grandfather grandpa liked the coins and, and money, money, so I was, I was always, always just drawn, drawn to history and well, well the history of the object, object and the story, story it could tell, the different stories, stories it could tell. Um, I just, I just knew, knew that that object had a journey, journey. so <laughs> I was <laughs> interested in figuring out. out how, how to preserve, preserve that object, object. So, so it can help, help tell more stories, stories and different stories. stories. So, um, yeah, yeah that, that, that's, that's what really drew me to the relations department. And um, also, so I, love I love the paperwork. paperwork. Um, and, and yeah, yeah in the collections department, there's a lot of paper, paper trails and, and, and all of that. So, so even though I was all over the place with learning and volunteering, I'm very happy that I did that because I realized the different aspects, you know, that go into the department. And, um, yeah, yeah, I love, love all the aspects, aspects that went into collections. And I also, I also learned, learned that there's a feeling with those objects. objects. So, so the type, type of objects that are brought in that affects everything, my work ethic, um, how, how I show up. up. Um, but yeah, yeah that, it's very, very emotional when it comes to me in the collections. It's not just, hey, I love objects, I want to know what else is Yeah. Well, it's that direct content contact with it right where you're hands-on with it and then you're also caring for it so there's that emotional you know you want to treat it properly and maybe we could backtrack a little bit for maybe some who don't know a lot about collections could you talk a little bit about what that looks like you know you said the paper trail what is that role right Right, gotcha that, that is something that, that I think I and a lot of people folks tend to do. We use our own lingo. We all do. Um, We're all guilty of it. So yeah, but yeah um, the collections, um, um, the department, we are responsible for what comes in, in and it goes out of the museum. museum and and uh, when I say the paper trail, trail basically like, like the objects they have, like a social security number. Kind of. So it's like in the collections department, you're like a travel agent for the object. And, and um, I, I really, really enjoy that. that. So, so that's, that's a, a simple sum, summary, summary of the yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, you're you're in charge of making sure that things aren't lost. Um, and it, yeah, it's the the we always talk about collections as being like the analytical. You know, you're the tracker. And what kind of skills would you say really you had to develop going into collections versus um, other departments and maybe individuals who are interested in it, what type of personality fits well in it or interests? Definitely. Um, as far as skills, I would say if you love paperwork and databases and Excel spreadsheets <laughs> and working in solitude, um, a lot of the times the collections department um, we're often in, in our own little corners, corners. So, so if you like those type of environments, um, maybe look into the collections department. As far as, far as personality, um, I have come across a lot of folks who have the same personality as me, we're introverts, um, we, we love to bury ourselves in our work, um, so yeah, yeah, we're, we're all very passionate about it, and um, we know, know that it's hard work, but it's good work. So, so, yeah, yeah but, but as far as the collection start when it comes to different, to different um, museums, it can, it can be, be different for the different museums as far, far as um, art and um, natural, natural history, just some of how the objects are handled. So, so that's something to consider. consider. Um, the, way the way you handle art, art objects are going to be the same as you handle natural history. You should be careful with everything, but I don't know how some it is. So this is getting to be a and working in different ones, what would you say, like, did you have to have different training for those different objects? How did you go about learning that? Was it, did you have to take classes or was it really more hands-on learning? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, so um, for me, me there, there were a few classes um, offered in my graduate program. program. Um, I, was I was able to, to well, there was one class offered and it was combined, combined in interning um, at the museum, museum that was on site. site. 
um, and the university, university but um, I, I took advantage of just a lot of outside resources, resources free, free resources, resources online, online classes, classes like, like um, um, there's, there's a lot of free classes, classes on, on, on my list website, Institute of Library Sciences. There are a lot of free resources, resources out there, so, so I just enhance my skills and knowledge on how to do the best to get your life out could you tell us a bit about that master's program and what that looks like and the skills you gained from that? Yeah, yeah so, so um, I went to Morgan State University, University obtained my, my MA in Museum Studies, studies and, and um, it's, it's not, not a traditional, traditional um, graduate, graduate program, program. Um, um, compared, compared to, to a lot of other different um, programs, programs. A, lot a lot of resources, resources are uh, given, given to, to the students. students. Unfortunately, my cohort was very, very small. Um, professors were, um, we didn't have a lot of professors, so I really had to create my experience. Um, but I did love that. Um, it created a very tight, um, a very supportive cohort. You know, whenever I came, up, came across an opportunity, or they came across an opportunity, they shared it. Um, let's see. Yeah, yeah, I, I just, just remember, remember taking advantage of everything and creating my own path. And what did that look like? What, uh, how did you find those opportunities? And maybe advice for people who you know, feel they're in a similar situation. Like, how did you do that? <laughs> um, um, I, I joined, joined, I joined as many Facebook groups as you can. can. Um, like, like I mentioned earlier, just take, take the risk and email folks, ask questions, visit your, your local museum, museum. Um, let's see, sign, sign up for job boards, um, any, any list serves, um, serves. Um, anything, anything like that, any free newsletters, um, doesn't, doesn't have to be free, free. Sometimes, sometimes I did um, pay a small subscription, but, but there's, there's a lot of great information, and the great thing about us museums, 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 most, Most of us love to help, so definitely ask, ask, ask questions. <laughs> so after graduating, what was your path to your current role? Um, let Maybe let's dig into that. Yeah, yeah okay, okay, so, so uh, after, after graduating, graduating with, with my, my bachelor's, bachelor's, I was under the impression that I could get any easy job. <laughs> so, so, I was, I was just applying to a lot, lot of positions, and I was not hearing anything back, back. and um, it, it wasn't, wasn't until, until like, I started, started having, having those meetings with folks, asking questions, and realizing, like, like, oh, there's a lot more people who are going to be attending the degree. So, um, I, like, like I said, I interned and volunteered. Um, I also humbled that, that, humbled that myself, and... <laughs> um, <laughs> And, and realized, realize, like, like, okay, I'm going to need to put in, 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 in the work. Um, so, so my first, first position, I think I wanted to get my foot in the door. So, so I remember working at, at the gift shop uh, at the Smithsonian. And there I met a lot, lot more uh, people, and I was around a lot more museum folks. folks. It wasn't my ideal position, um, but I knew, I knew that it would help me. So I took that position. I was there for maybe, like, a year or so. And, and then, then um, I, I ended up working, working at the front, front desk in the museum in Maryland. And, and um, I'm really thankful for that opportunity because I figured out what type of museum professional, professional I wanted to be. I figured out um, like what, I, what, I, what I, really I really wanted to do. And not, not to jump, jump at every full time opportunity that I offered to you. You know, it, 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 I understand. understand um, Based, based on financial, financial situations, I never had the privilege to turn down positions, um, full-time full positions, but I, I, I definitely, definitely wasn't, wasn't, but I I was very determined to not take every opportunity, opportunity that was given to me, because I really wanted, wanted to put my hand for a to start on it, um, which, which is, I feel, I feel like, like it's maybe a little bit harder to get into. Um, that's, that's why, why on my blog I have a great um, article that says, Oh my, oh my gosh, gosh my mind is the title. Oh, oh a museum, museum forcing professionals, professionals to be an expert. I just don't really want to like, more positions that are really well. Could you talk more about that? Um, is it just that there are more public-facing roles, or what What do you 
maybe just give a snippet of what that article is about. And then um, I can also link it in the description after we get yeah. chatting. Sure. So, so yeah, yeah, like, like you, you said, said, I think, I think they're, they're, they're a level of public facing, facing um, positions, positions that, that, are, that, are, that are offered. And, and um, a, lot a lot of folks are not aware, aware of the Gwen Police Department. department um, you, know, you know, there's, there's a, lot a lot of push for, for um, more uh, uh, front house positions, positions than there are like, like, and which ones once they like, they're, 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 they're not going anywhere. So it's not really available. That's what I like. And, and then, then um, the article, it goes into maybe giving some tips, tips on folks who have, have more of an introverted personality, how to navigate this world, world um, as, as an introvert, um, how, how to try to, how to drive, drive and, and so contribute. Um, so yeah. yeah. Well, it seems like you've done a really good job. As much as you say you're an introvert, you've really put yourself out there, which let me just commend. Um, so it's <laughs> proof that it's uh, doable, right? Um, so I guess since you brought up the blog, how did you get to the idea to start it? And, um, how, yeah, tell me, you've now turned it into, you know, a bit of a business with your book. So let's talk about that. Sure. Um, um so, so, um, my blog and my business, business it, was it was created during 2020 and that was, that was a rough, rough year. year. Um, um for, for us all, all. Um, even, even though it was a rough year, year that was also my most creative year. Um, that, that was the only time that I had to myself um, to realize, realize how creative I was. I was pouring so, so much into my professional career. didn't realize that I had all the creative ventures and ideas. So um, it was it actually was going to be when I focused on, on um, like, like creating, creating my blog, blog. I always, always wanted, wanted to write a blog, blog. and I that I did it when I wanted to. It, it just wouldn't be expressing anger towards, towards the museum world. world. <laughs> so, <laughs> now, um, well, well, during 2020, 2020, I was like, okay, I want, I want this to be a resource, resource. I want this to be motivational, you know, you know I, I wanted to create something that, that was just more than being on the internet and putting my feelings out there. So, um, yeah, yeah, I, I, I learned, learned a lot about, about myself. Um, I learned, learned that, that I wanted to be an author. author. I wrote children's, children's book. book. Um, yeah, yeah, so, so 2020, it was, it was, it was a rough year, but it was also so my, my most creative year. year. Yeah. I learned, I learned that I was a cause like historical, historical figures, figures, but... It's um, <laughs> <laughs> fun. Fun. So yeah. tell me about your book, um, which is lovely for anyone who doesn't know about it. It's an adorable children's book. Um, how did that idea come to you and maybe how did you, you know, go about publishing? What did that look like? Yes. yes. So, so um, the, the idea, idea came, came from, from uh, just multiple encounters, encounters that I had with different visitors when I was, um, when I would walk floors of the museum at work. work. Um, I, I would run into, into folks who look like Nathan like Brown in the black community, and they would often say, you know, where's, where's the exhibit that, that you know, tells, tells something about people, people that look like me, but outside of slavery, or, or you know, there, there, there's, there's a lack of representation here, and, um, or, or I would have folks come to me, um, with, with their daughter or their son, and they're like, do you have anything that would be inspiring to this little one? So, um, yeah, yeah, that that, that helped, helped me write, write the children's, children's book. Um, I, also I also just wanted to get kids thinking, thinking about, about. I mean, like, like I said, I did want, want to be a teacher, teacher so, so um, I was trying, trying to. to I, think I think those like, like teacher groups were maybe coming back to my mom's and to teaching my grandmother's and to teaching. So I was trying to figure out how can I still impact the youth. But, but in, in a way that's comfortable, like, for me. So that's how I came up with the children's And then I have to ask, how do you do all of this with your, you know, I don't want to call it a side hustle, your your company with your museum job? How do you do it? I, you know, <laughs> it's, it's not balancing that. How do you, you know, how do you balance that? 
Or you know, yeah. also maybe also adding on to it um, at the end, how do you, how do you maybe leverage it in the professional world? Sure. Um, hmm, that, 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 that really that, that, that kind of just, just do it. It, 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 it makes me happy, happy you know, going back to museums, we can pour so much into, into our work and, and we don't have that, that much left for ourselves. And, and I, I found, found myself uh, in, in that situation, in my blog, my business, the children's book, the impact that has the the positive result that I'm getting. I'm not getting every positive, but we're going to get to the positive right now. Sure. Uh, just, just that feedback is the fulfillment that I originally, originally wanted when I was pursuing my um, career, and that's, that's really what fuels me. Fuels me. Fuels me. Um, that, that purpose, purpose that, that mission. And the, the joy. joy. Um, so, so yeah, I do work with my job and get off, but, but it's not like I'm going to say something that's, that, that I don't enjoy. So, so finding, finding something that you would like to do outside of your museum career um, um, to pour back, back into yourself, yourself it's really essential. Yeah. And, and leveraging that um, with, with my, my career. Um, um, I actually don't do that that much. much. I, I, I try, try to keep it, keep my business in my professional life separate, but um, I'm, I'm still, still, I'm still happy to do that. <laughs> Great. And, oh, let me just make sure we're, we'll make, make sure we're um, both in screen. I, well, I would love to switch to um, what, do you current, what is your, you know, we, you work at the Smithsonian, and let's maybe hear a little bit about what your role is, what are your daily responsibilities, what does that look like? Yeah, yeah um, um, oh, I'm looking, looking at the chat, chat. I'm, so I'm so sorry, sorry there's an echo. Um, um, hope, hope you guys can hear me. <laughs> um, um, so, so right, right now, now I am the, the rights, rights and reproduction, reproduction assistant at the Asian Art Museum. With that, as many museum positions, I wear multiple hats. Um, so I currently handle the outside and um, external and internal requests for images um, of our collections. So um, are we good? We're good. We're good. Can you hear me okay? I can. Okay, we're good. Okay. So, so yeah, that. Go ahead. Your your rights and reproductions position. Yes, and um, it's it's interesting because I'm in the imaging and photography department, which is underneath the collections department. So I still get to work with the objects. Um, it's just in. Um, a different capacity. So, and it's also like case by case. So let's say we have a researcher, they would like um, to use an image of an object in there um, for their research. I would coordinate with photographers and um, registrars or collection managers to get that image photograph. And I handle the like uh, legal rights to that. So um, I didn't mention this, but I figured out that I really love uh, the legal side of objects when I was in South Carolina for three years um, working at the State Museum. And um, there I was the collections inventory coordinator, wear, wore multiple hats. Um, but yeah, I worked with the objects and I also dealt with the, the rights and um, in the legal and ethical side. So <laughs> I, I figured out that I I'm so sorry for all the feedback, but yeah. I it's okay. It I, I think we fixed it. It seems that somebody said we fixed it. So I think we're good. Cool. So yeah, um, I figured out that I, I love the laws and regulations to the, um, the objects. And uh, when I saw my current position open, I'm like, hey, this is perfect for me. It fits my personality. Um, and it will bring me back home to the DMV area, which I love, uh, the art, history, and culture here. So I um, was privileged enough to take the position in South Carolina, but also go back 
um, home to to Baltimore and to DC. Yeah. And I should say, if you don't follow Telly on her Instagram, she posts pictures of the Smithsonian all the time. And it's just so beautiful. It's, I, I, we were pre this interview chatting about it and we're just both obsessed. It's so beautiful. It is. It is very beautiful. And it's hard not to, I try every day not to take a picture of the Smithsonian Castle, but it, it's a vibe and it's also a reminder um and maybe homage to myself um, if i'm using that word yeah that um it was, it was a lot of hard work <laughs> um, uh, getting, getting here which honestly it 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 shouldn't be as much hard work yeah but um i think that may be leading us into like a different part well well different. we'll get there let's first go back could you maybe explain like what a maybe a typical day looks like um, in what you're like kind of the nitty gritty of what you do? Um, what types of projects do you work on, et cetera? Sure. So um, I'm currently I'm on a hybrid schedule. I work from home some days and then I go on site. And when I'm on site, I, um, I obsess about the architecture. But um, <laughs> I go on site um, depending on the nature of what I'm doing um, that day or that, that week. So I work with researchers, scholars, um, publishers all over the country who would love to use our images. So uh, for an example, day to day, um, let's say a publishing company in Paris who I'm working with right now, they would like to um, feature four porcelain um, vases or something like that. Um, I do research on those objects to see if they can use those images because it's not just, oh, you want these images and I deliver them. Um, there's research involved. Um, there's appropriate um, crediting for these images. I get to work with different departments um, to see if I can even uh, provide these images for them. So that's a quick summary. <laughs> no, that's great. And I think we can go back to the direction of the industry of how, not to make a quick turn, but I think it's really important, you know, it's just mentioned how difficult it can be. Um, and it takes a lot of, you know, dedication. A little, I, I would, I think you'd agree, sometimes harder than maybe the corporate world. Um, so maybe what are some major issues you see or major, what are maybe directions we're heading in that are good or maybe directions it should go in? Sure. So, oh, that was a very heavy question. <laughs> and I try, um, I try to be as positive as I can when I answer this question and not give the same um, expected answer, but it is what it is. Um, I would love to see a lot more genuine inclusion, you know, in the museum world. Definitely um, stop, you know, t tokenizing. I would lo love to see um, a lot more leadership, people in leadership roles, and just a lot more museum professionals um, stop looking. I say this a lot, but stop looking at the community as like empty vessels, you know, figure out what the community wants, you know, and needs. And, um, to supply that in a genuine way, in a thoughtful way, and not just an in-the-moment celebratory, performative yeah. uh, manner. Um, I do see that a lot of um, museums are making the effort to include salary now in their job positions, which is great. I love that. I would love to see that like a lot more. Yeah. Um, yeah, that that's like the, the nitty gritty. I would love to see genuine um, effort and thorough um, effort when it comes to actually serving the community. That goes along with bringing in, um, co how can I say it, objects as well, because those can play, those can um, affect the community, how they're brought in and th things like that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, it, what does it say if your collections don't represent the staff members you have? Um, what does that relationship look like, right? It's it's a two-way street. Definitely. Yeah, so what, you know, as we're talking about 
your career path, your roles, and the industry, what would you, what advice would you have for somebody who's interested specifically in collections work, maybe they're getting started, or maybe they're kind of, they've had a few opportunities, but they're not really sure where to go. What advice would you have? Maybe skills, um, or just things to look out for? Hmm. Um, I think I have mentioned this. Signed up, sign up to as many job boards and listservs um, as you can. Um, also try to have fun. That's one thing that I wish I would have um, did. I'm having fun now with my book and my blog and, and all of that and the Smithsonian perks, but um, pursuing my career, I wish I would have maybe took advantage of um, different opportunities if you can um, outside of state, um, uh, things like that. Um, figure out what success looks like to you. I would definitely stress that to anyone, you know? Um, and what I mean by that is figure out job title, salary, location, you know, um, all of that. And um, understand that it may not be easy. Try not to compare yourself to others. Um, def not try. Um, not try not to. Don't compare yourself to others. So you never know what resources or connections that, that other people may have. So your plan is your plan. Your path is your path. And... Try to <laughs> yeah. And then I guess for s collection specifically, let's say somebody is starting from maybe they had an internship in a curatorial department um, and they're trying to or they're just starting. What advice would you have in skills to develop or things to study? What would you recommend? Gotcha. Um, definitely object handling. <laughs> there are lots of, I said it already, but there are lots of free resources out there on proper object handling, um, the proper language that's needed to um, document the condition of the objects. There's a lot of um, downloadable spreadsheets, um, things like that. Enhancing, enhancing the lingo, proper object handling. Um, what else? There are tons of books out there um, that I would recommend. And the, the library actually has a lot of them for free. So <laughs> you can save coins there. Huge, huge fan of the library, right? Got to support your local libraries. And also, I, I think you touched on this, but really being an Excel lover. Um, so I assume you'd want those really, um, really strong would you say more of the detail oriented administrative skills as well? Yeah, definitely detail oriented. Um, extremely critical, not extremely critical, but um, yeah, I would just say very detailed oriented because when you're documenting the conditions of these objects, you know, um, curators and um, other departments, they're going to use that information um, when they're in the database to see if they can use those objects for a show or anything like that. Um, yeah, very very detail oriented. Yeah. You can never have information here. How would that um maybe if we could use an example, what would be an instance of a curator being able to use something or not? Sure. So um let's say the a curator would love to use um a painting. I mean that this is an actual recent example. Um the curator wanted to use a certain painting, but the paint was not dry, even though <laughs> even though this was a painting for um, over like a hundred years old, it was like clobbed on. Yes. So um, in the collections department, you, you basically give every object TLC and having that information, it's really useful to, to curators. Um, so yeah, she, she wanted to use the curator at the time as a she, she wanted to use the object, but she, she um, tuned into the database and realized all the problems that the painting had. So she had to go a different route. But um, yeah, having all the information about the condition of the piece, if it has hanging wires, things like right. that, that, that really helps a curator out. Yeah. So 
what would you say, because I maybe maybe someone will ask this, but I'll go ahead and ask it. If you're giving the objects TLC, what is the difference between a collections person and a conservator? Could you maybe give a little brief description of the difference? Sure, because I, there was one point in time I thought I wanted to be a conservator, <laughs> but there is a lot of science that goes into conservation. Um, so that's that's actually like one of the main differences. Um, as far as the collection manager or collection inventory, we're really looking at the piece and figuring out storage solutions. And um, we're worried about the location, um, things like that. Um, a conservator, on the other hand, um, they're more so, I'm not gonna speak that much. I don't know like that much about it, but um, they're more so looking at the repair. Um, they are able to repair the object. Um, I am not. I, I more so care about the location and the stability of it anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know. Yeah, making sure that, you know, it's not gonna get moldy or, you know, if it's right crumbling, it's not, you're gonna, it will look at solutions to take care of that. That's great. And a great little simple um, it, little answer to how they're different. Well, at this point, I would love to open it up if anyone has any questions. Um, this will be kept up on the YouTube channel. So as this stays up, um, you can also add questions to the comments and you know we may get to them over time. Uh, so let's open it up and see if anyone has any questions for Telly. And I also want to say, uh, somebody in the comments said how much they love this discussion and they'd love to see more museum professionals being content creators, as in blogs, Instagrams, TikToks, and it makes it way more approachable, which I think that is definitely the goal of this series and Telly's blog definitely does that for sure. Thing. Yeah, I would love to see that um, a lot more as well. You know what? I, I actually am seeing it. I'm. I feel like it's risky. Um, a lot of I, I hear this a lot. Like a lot of people don't want to get, I guess, in trouble. You know, um, with their museum, they want to make sure that their their views are their own. They're not representing yeah. them. So that's. I know we're opening this up for questions, but I feel like this. No, <laughs> I think well, we can use that as um like a little sidebar because I think um, there are many other industries where people do day in my life as a teacher and you'd think that would be um, really shut off because you're working with kids or something like that. Um, but there is something that museum professionals have been really slow to embrace social media in that way. Um, I think it really just started a little bit before the pandemic. Um, and then used a lot during the pandemic as resources. Um, I think because there's the museum world, I think, tell you to agree, can be quite traditional in many ways. So um, embracing social media, there's that fear of wanting to look professional. Would you, what was you, how, yeah, maybe if you want to touch on your experience with that. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I would love to see it more, but I, like you said, um, the traditional aspect, I feel like it can deter folks. So um, things to, if you did wanted to maybe um, embark on the journey like that, um, but also protect yourself, um, creating an LLC as my as mine is called a girl in a museum or LLC. So that protects me that my views are my own. It is not connected related to any, you know, institution um, that, I, that I work for. Um, or simply just stating that, you know, like these views are my own. But, um, but sometimes I feel like that's still playing into assisting museums with being traditional. Like we should just be able to create, you know, with freedom without thinking about, without even thinking about, you know, if we're, if our job or anything like that's going to be in jeopardy. But yeah. having some protection is, is still nice. <laughs> yeah. So, JS has a question. Um, you know, you mentioned certain Facebook groups 
or Facebook groups in general, but they were wondering your favorite resources for museum professionals. So maybe what are certain, um, like maybe some favorites um, and how do you find the good ones from the not so good? Yeah, sure. So um, I actually love joining Facebook groups, um, museum professional, emerging museum professionals, even if you're not considered the traditional emerging museum professional, still join those groups, those discussions that they have are great. Um, I know I said that I'm an introvert, but I still <laughs> I do like to go to the happy hours that they have every once in a while, just being um, in those environments with those conversations are great. Um, let's see. Um, and any, I mean, I love books. So any book that's related, <laughs> any book that's related to what you would like to do. Yeah. Um, it's, do you have maybe a favorite um, imprint or publisher? Or is there like maybe um, a really reputable one or maybe a specific title that you really like? Yeah. Um, I'm really collections um, specific. So there is um, a book called Registration. Oh my gosh, it's escaping me right now. But it's called Registration Methods, I believe. Okay. And um, that that's a really great resource for anyone who wants to like work in the collection department. Um, as far as curating, um, hmm. there is a great book called Curatorial Curatorial Activism. Mm -hmm. Love that book. I can't remember um, the author right now, but that one is it's, great. It's like an orange or red book. If you Google it, it's the first one that comes up. Yeah, I would agree. That's a really good one. Well, jumping to the next question, Lisa has a question um, wondering, do curators at your museum have PhDs and are they expected to? Do you think they should? So since you're in collections, I guess I'll ask, what would you say the standard education expectation is? Um, you have a um, graduate degree, what would you say the average for your colleagues is? Uh, yes, definitely a graduate degree. Um, as far as curatorial, definitely a PhD. Um, I would say, yeah, depending on the role um, in the museum, a PhD. Um, if you're more so um, in the front facing curatorial department, teaching role, leading talks, <laughs> things like things like that, um, PhD, definitely. Um, yeah, I, I, I know a lot of curators um, who have a PhD in the concentration that they're, um, that they're considered an expert in. Mm -hmm. And in collections, is it typically a master's or are there some people with PhDs? What would you say the average is? Yeah, um, the average is definitely um, a master's degree. Um, well, there's a variety um, that I've come across just talking to people. I've heard folks having a master's in public history, and from there, you can um, go a curatorial route, curatorial route, or like a collections route, depending on the coursework that you take. Um, yeah, uh, finding a graduate program that's really catered to what you like to do in the museum field is um, extremely uh, essential, I think. And how did you find that? you know, what did you look for? Um, was it professors, coursework, um, external opportunities? How did you make your decision? Yeah. So for me, um, I definitely look for a program that was going to give me a hands-on experience. Um, there's a lot of programs out there that are online, you know, um, and I looked at, I did look into those programs, but that's not what I really wanted. I wanted something that was more hands-on. Um, I wanted to get excited about going to class. So having classes um, on site. So I looked for a program that would um, that, that would give me that. And um, my university, Morgan State, it did it did give me that. Just not to the extent that I would like. I'm a huge nerd, so I want <laughs> um, I wanted more. But um, <laughs> for, for the most part, it it served. Um, its purpose. Yeah. So Angela has a question. She's majoring in art history in New York and is currently looking into what path in the art world she wants to get into. Into currently interested in art conservation. What job boards and places are your favorite to look for internships? So you mentioned IMLS having a lot of resources. What have you found for maybe that emerging professional internship to be the best place to look? 
Yeah, um, honestly, going to the museum, um, the museum's website in specific, and honestly, um, searching there, I, I would say start there. Mm -hmm. um, job is, is job boards. Part I, I can't think of any right now. My mind is like racing. Um, I can't think of any specific job boards for art, art conservation, but um, how can, let me see. The Registrar Association, they have a listserv and on there, there's a lot of conversations. Mm -hmm. um, it's not just registrations and collections, um, resources that will be given to you. So even if it's um, a curatorial listserv, um, I would recommend still signing on, yeah. signing up for with any type of conversations can start. <laughs> yeah, and I would say, yeah, adding on to that, um, you know, people will send it out to, so say I'm on education job boards because that's my background, but you'll get people saying, hey, do you have a colleague? We have this job opening, please share with your networks. So um, really anything like that. Um, AMLA, the American Alliance of Museums, that's a little bit more professional base, but sometimes they'll post internships. And the College Arts Association website also will have internships. Also, um, your college's department, if you're not signed up, they typically send out um, emails as well. And talking to your professors, they also typically know about internships. That's pretty true. Oh, Emily has a really good one. Um, if you weren't working in collections, which museum job or department do you think you'd be working in? After all your experience, where do you think you would land now? That is a very great question. I never thought about that. Honestly, maybe, oh wow, I I'm, I don't think there's any other department I would be in that would, that would, that will allow me to actually contribute to the field um, in the in the way that I would like to. Um, mm -hmm. I would not do great in education. I've actually tried it and kids looked at me like, um, <laughs> can we get someone who has like a more energy? Cause she's it's boring. not for everyone. It's not for everyone. Well, maybe, so you're currently at the Asian Art Museum. Is there a different type of museum? Like, n you know, not saying you're, you know, just like, a collection type you'd be interested in? Let's see. Um, I actually really love the Air and Space Museum. I love NAMAC, of course, NAMAC, sorry, the National Museum of African American History and Culture. I love that one. I oh. love the objects, of course. <laughs> Air and so, Space, that's, that's a fun one. I didn't expect that. I do love Air and Space. Oh, a lot of people think that museum is boring, but I'm just like, there are planes, like, come on. Like, <laughs> um, but. I think they're actually close to renovation right now, but they're going to be opening mm. up in October. So, um, but yeah, I, that's one thing that I do really like about the, the Smithsonian. There are great perks, but I love being so close to all these different institutions to just be able to walk there and um, just indulge in the, the history and the art. Yeah. Um, really nice. So someone asked, can an art history certificate help you work in a museum? Um, what would you say? I would say yes. Um, I think having a, having, it is kind of is what it is, having a very nice decorated resume is something that is important to break through in the museum field. So if you can take advantage of a history, um, of any certificate, um, that would be great. Um, that was something that I did. Um, if my job offered uh, professional development, mm -hmm. even that's something that you know you should take advantage of. Even after you landed your museum job, your dream job, you should still try to develop yourself professionally and keep growing and learning. So, um, yeah, getting certificates beyond graduate school is definitely a good idea. Yeah. Danielle asked, is it possible to switch careers into the museum profession without an internship on your CV? So switching into the museum world. Um, hmm. I have, you know, that's a great question for a uh, 
discussion board, but I have encountered and talked to folks who um, they started in the museum. They did not start in the museum, but they're working in the museum now. So um, I wouldn't, I can't say that it's hard or easy. I don't have, you know, um, direct experience with that, but. And I think, wouldn't you say, I, I think it also really depends on what area, um, you know, something like if you're working in business or fundraising and then you want to go into development and fundraising for a museum, that's maybe an easier switch than going from anything else to curatorial. Or maybe you have, um, you were an art teacher at an elementary school and then jumping to museum education. It's different, but, you know, those are easier switches. Um, I think it also really depends on the department, the size of the museum, um, and what your transferable skills are. Right. Yes, that's very true. So a lot, yeah, transferable skills. I mean, a lot of the things that we're doing now, um, other professions are, do, you know, do them to teaching, like you said, business, finance. So, yeah. Or if you work in like data analytics, you know, if you go and get maybe extra training, that doesn't mean you couldn't transition over into collections eventually. Very true. I was just um, very fortunate to know, learn um, that I was a nerd very young. So <laughs> um, Helps. Helps. it would be extremely strategic, yeah. but yes, yeah, switching, um, joining the museum professional without that is, is definitely impossible. Yeah. Oh, Anna has a really hard one. Do you think museum jobs are well paid? Oh, wow. I mean, I don't oh. think it's a hard one, but it's, it's a complicated conversation. <laughs> it's a it's a very real question that I love. Um, do I think <laughs> museum jobs are well paid? Um, there is, I don't think there's a universal answer for that. Um, depending on the museum location, there's a lot of factors that goes into the uh, the salary um, now. But I can say, you know, uh, all museums can do a lot better um, <laughs> with their paying their. Uh, they're very dedicated uh, staff, but um, yeah, a lot of a lot of factors go into. And also, I would say seniority. Um, depending on the institution, there is a really large discrepancy between um, seniority in certain departments versus others, versus um, your frontline staff, your your hourly wage staff. Um, it you know. Maybe your chief curator is paid exorbitantly well um, and not so much for other department heads. So it's it and that's really dependent on where you are. You know, in a major city, your salary is probably going to be higher, but it may not go as far versus another area. Right. Definitely. Well, thank you so much, Telly. Uh, it was so I'm so glad it seems people enjoyed this conversation. Thank you so much. And being brave enough to be the first guest. Um, and again, this will be posted to live on the YouTube so people can come back to it. Um, and thank you again. I'm going to put Telly's socials in the comment section or in the description so you can go check her out, show her some love on her blog. Um, it's a really great resource. Well, thank you all. Thank you again, Tally, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.